Peter Blanc in ACC 17 here in Washington, D.C. Uh, the whole issue of FFR is now sort of central in this meeting. IFR versus FFR, which of the two is better? Instantaneous FFR, if you will, for IFR. But the question really is which of these clinically makes sense and which should we use? And with me is Justin Davies, who has presented one of two trials. The first trial is Feedheart, which he did not present. And the other is, what's the name of the trial? Define just? Flare. Define Flare. And Define Flare is the one that Justin just finished talking about. So Justin, tell me about Define Flare and the IFR versus FFR. It's not a controversy, really, and it really isn't even a competition. Tell me about your trial. So it's a large uh, study comparing IFR and FFR, looking at clinical outcomes, 2,500 patients, looking at hard clinical outcomes at one year. Uh, and the study showed that IFR is indeed non-inferior to FFR. Okay, now your trial is very similar to the Sveetheart trial, right? And you guys actually work together. This is a wonderful collaboration. Tell me about how that worked. So we knew that to change guidelines, we'd need to have two clinical trials. So we set out, I worked with Matthias Gottberg and the team in Sweetheart uh, to harmonize all our endpoints. And so we could essentially bring together two studies into a four and a half thousand patient analysis later on this year. And the Sweetheart study showed? Sweetheart study showed exactly the same as the FLARE study. It showed, showed non-inferiority of IFR uh, compared to FFR. Okay. So the issue here is not so much as to whether one is inferior versus superior. The question is, these are clinical outcomes, aren't they, Justin? These are MACE outcomes, death, myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization. Absolutely. Hard clinical outcomes for the first time using FFR and IFR in a generalizable patient population. The patients you are seeing day in, day out like with intermediate lesions. We know that we can do these uh, treatments faster, so the time is also shorter in flare, and also much more pleasant for patients. A tenfold reduction in symptoms for patients in flare. Okay, now I sort of get, I use both of these. Uh, we have the IFR at the VA, where I work on Thursdays, and I rather like it, because it's quick. Yeah. Uh, the adenosine business being uncomfortable for patients is another side issue, but I don't think it's critical. I'm sure you would agree with that. But there are these sort of intermediate patients, right? Patients that have an IFR of 0 0.92, 0 0.91, uh, or, and an FFR of, I don't know, pick a number, 0 0.8, 0 0.79. Uh, tell me about the groups in your two trials now uh, and what the differences were there, because this is the important message. Absolutely. So in both studies, we use a single cut point, less than or equal to 0.89, to decide whether to treat or defer. And very interestingly, if you look at the patients who are deferred, and you compare the IFR and FFR arm, there's no significant difference in any of the composite endpoints or the, or the MACE throughout. But in every single one, there's a trend towards uh, IFR being superior to FFR. Which means that if you have, uh, let's say, an IFR of 0.90 and you defer, then in fact the outcomes are a little bit better than an FFR? At least as good as FFR. I think that's the way of saying it. Okay, so at least as good, but the data is sort of bend toward the IFR. They do, and, and this is because the study was not designed to be a superiority trial. But interestingly, as you said, if we combine the, the analyses together with Sweetheart into a much larger data set, we may have power to look at other things, including this. Okay, so I guess the question is, does, that, does this end up being less stenting if you use IFR? Yes, about 5% less stents. All right, so less stenting with the IFR, a little bit more specific, and certainly the outcomes are equivalent and there's sort of a tendency toward uh, uh, having better outcomes for those deferred patients or those patients in the mid-range. So what's the final clinical message to take home from this, Justin, uh, for all the people that are doing interventions out there? I think they need to use more physiology. I don't really care if they use IFR or FFR, but the patients will benefit if you use more physiology. Will we have a change in the guidelines? I think there's already been a change in the appropriate use criteria, which shows that when FFR can be used, IFR now can also be used. So there you have it, folks. Uh, the VA wins this one for me, and uh, I like the IFR because it's quick, and IFR seems to be the thing that we'll all be using in the future. Thank you, Justin.